on today's episode. The weather's cold and miserable, no chance of flying. Today then on my channel, I'm going to return to one of my electronics projects. Some five years ago now, I put together this little power bank from a kit and it's been really useful and still functions today. However, being five years old, it only supports the standard USB ports capable of outputting up to two amps on one and one amp on the other. It does have a rather novel torch function, but uh, that's all there is to it. As five years have passed, time clearly moves on inexorably. Today then, this little power bank module brings to the table a USB-C, a micro USB, which is, I believe, only for input. We'll check that out. And two other USB connections there. And the addition, for those of an Apple persuasion, uh, a lightning port. The board supports all the quick charge two and three type protocols and also the power delivery function. And with power delivery, it's limited to 18 watts. Therefore, we can output up to 3 amps at 5 volts, 2 amps at 9 volts, and 1.5 amps at 12 volts. There's a little chip here, which is an IP5306, which is a battery management chip. The function of that, I believe, is just to control the charge and protect the cells that we're going to use in our project. I'm guessing then that the big chip here, which sadly they've removed the numbers from, so I've no idea what it is, is doing all the clever stuff for the quick charge functions. If anybody happens to know what that chip is, then please leave me a comment down below. I'd be fascinated to find out. There's a little push button on the side here. There's no other documentation with the board, so we'll have to try and work out what that does as we go along. The cells I'm going to use have been recovered from an old laptop battery. Quite often you will find that there are useful cells in old laptop batteries. I have a video which I'll post a link to up there where you can see my technique for uh, dismantling those cells and recovering uh, the useful parts. Got a bunch of little threaded inserts here and some M3 screws. Using Tinkercad I've knocked up a little enclosure. It's only very basic, uh, functional, if not aesthetically pleasing, shall we say. Some screw holes to support the lid, which is being printed as we speak, and the two standoffs there to put the board in. I wasn't able to get my slicing software to provide the necessary supports, therefore I've just put these little pillars in place, which hopefully we can remove without too much difficulty. Enough rambling then, let's get on to the next part of the project which will be cleaning up the 3D printed case. The very fine stringing that you saw in the first part of the video I've simply removed with a quick blast from a hairdryer. Don't overdo it though, this is only thin PLA plastic and it will deform very easily. This is just the brim or skirt that has been added by the slicing software to aid in the first layer sticking to the print bed. We can go ahead and remove that. Now I can remove these little supporting pillars just with a pair of side cutters. They're coming away really easily is a good thing. Look like little maggots. I can tidy this edge up I think with a file. There that looks reasonably neat. Now to go ahead and put the threaded inserts in to hold the board and indeed the top cover. The way I'm going to try and put this threaded inserts in is just with my temperature controlled soldering iron. I've put the temperature down to 200 degrees. Hopefully that shan't be too much. Yeah, 
Yes, that seems to work okay. There. Looks like I got my measurements off by about a, a millimetre or so. Those two pillars need to be moved in. I'll make an adjustment on my file on Tinkercad. For now I'm just going to bodge it by heating it up with the iron there. I'm literally moving it across. There, once the screws are in place, nobody will ever know. My next task then is to join the two pairs of cells together. We're going to be 1S 4P, 4 in parallel. I've cut off a little strip of the connecting nickel strip. Do be very careful of these. The edges are razor sharp. And that's just going to fit it over there. I'm going to be using my El Cheapo spot welder. And uh, there'll be another link up there to my review of this. That's one, two, three. Let's just check on that. If that's nice and strong, I can't easily pull that off. Connect it to the opposite cell. Whoop. <laughs> I think that one definitely went home. And I'm even using my 3D printed vise. I simply don't know what I used to do with a 3D printer. Now I can go on and flip those joints over. Hopefully you can see the little indents there of the of the spot weld. Um, very similar to the original ones. That's not coming apart anytime soon. Fully assembled now. I've put the spot welded cells in and put in some little pigtails which I've soldered onto the board there. Need the little switch to activate it. And it's showing 78, which I guess is 78% battery. If we measure the cells, 3.9 volts, which I guess is around 78% of their charge. My 3D printed lid has come out quite well. And I have a, a technique. I don't have a, a fancy printer that can print more than one colour at a time. I have a way of changing the filament partway through the print. If you're interested in that, uh, I'll link to a video up there. Well, that should fit on here. Let me get that screwed on and then we can do some testing. All sorts of gadgets now to play with to do some testing. Firstly, I have a, another power bank with a little USB monitor on there. Let's just check the charging capabilities. And the flashing there indicates that it's charging. I'm not sure if it's very clear there, but it's charging at 1.65 amps, which is quite respectable. That then takes care of the charging. I don't think there's anything else much that we can test on that side of things. Looking now then at the standard USB ports, I have this very dangerous USB to crocodile clip arrangement here which is connected to my electronic load currently currently <laughs> set to 0.2 of an amp. Again, hopefully you can see what's going on there. There's nothing happening at the moment because the load isn't running. I switch the load on, 200 milliamps there, and the same indicated on the display. I can now increase the load to half an amp. Half an amp indicated there. Put it up to an amp, seems to be quite happy with that. 4.77 volts. One and a half amps. Going for broke now up to two amps. Quite happy there at two amps, 4.7 volts. If we go much over that, I think we'll be in trouble. 2.4 amps. 2.5 amps, 
2.8. See the voltage has really dropped off there. So we'll wind that back down. Half an amp and back to half an amp there. Quite a respectable result there, I think. I would have liked to have been able to test the different voltages out from the C type connector, but the tester that I wanted to use hasn't arrived yet. Perhaps I'll reserve that for another video. What I can do though is I have my phone which is USB-C using then USB-C to C. Let's plug that in there. I did try this before and uh, found the result quite interesting. As my phone is fully charged at the moment, rather than the power bank charging my phone, my phone is actually charging the power bank. We can see the digit at the end there flashing away. And at this time I don't have anything else that I can check the USB-C but I'm sure it functions perfectly adequately. There we have it then, uh, quite a neat rainy day project. I'm quite pleased with the way that it's turned out. It might not happen today, but in the next day or so I'll put a link in the description to my files from Tinkercad and also a link up to Thingiverse where you can get the STLs and if you wish to print one yourself. Thanks for watching.